Well, I don't know about you, but I always think it's a real shame when you see a really nicely converted camper van and there's all the different connection points down the side. So electric hookup points or water tank in points and various different things along the side of the vehicle that kind of break up the lovely clean lines of a transporter. We spend so much time picking nice wheels and putting side bars on and doing whatever we want to to the sides to make them look nice. Then you see these great big black points or white points along the side where you connect them all. It doesn't matter to some people because they just want it for function. But I like the idea of everything looking clean and stealth and hidden. So you've, you've, I'm sure you've probably seen that we already do the e-grill, which is the electric hookup point that goes in the front of, of T6 and T6.1s to hide away the uh, connection point. Well, the same people have now brought you the stealth rear door flap. So I've seen this done several times by other people and people have kind of had a go at trying to do it and it works, but not very well. Um, design point being that everything is hidden out of the way. So you have this flap here and you can have various connection points at the back here. So the kind of home jobs I've seen have a couple of cupboard hinges, they sag, they flap around, they move, you can hear them vibrating, they foul the back of the bodywork there, and they just don't look particularly pretty. But the idea behind it is great. So if you have a tailgate vehicle like this one, this is, can be utilized because it's currently a dead space. So the beauty of this thing here is, you'll see when it's wide open like this, it hinges back the, the way the hinge has been designed. Instead of just flapping out, it hinges out and back. It gives you plenty of room to have different connection points here, whether it be, like I said earlier, a gas point or a water inlet or electric hookup point. It can be hidden here behind this door flap and then it pushes away nice and neatly and closed and then locked in place with magnets. You wouldn't know it's there when you're not using it. Just a nice addition and a nice way, nice bit of tech, nice way to hide away those connection points. Now this design is available for you to purchase on our website. So with this one actually, the idea with this, this is my T6.1, what we're going to do is put a 240 hookup point behind here, which is then going to be uh, run through in the back and be connected to one of these Ecotech portable power systems, which you may have seen us talk about in other videos. I'm also going to have a rock USB and USB-C point here, idea being, we can connect up 240 if you want to connect an exterior speaker to it or charge phones and stuff when we're out and about. It shows it's all hidden behind that door flap just for the sake of having a bit of tech really. And then it's just hidden away nicely when we're not using it behind that flap. So dead simple to install, uses the original OEM flap so you don't need to worry about getting anything painted. I'm going to hand you over to Mitch now and he's going to run you through quickly how easy it is to install and show you the whole process. Uh, use the QR code on your phone and then up it comes. Click on the PDF and there's your instructions. So I'm going to start by removing the tail light to gain access to this panel. So I'm removing the two uh, screws holding the light in. There we go. And then once the screws are removed, you just tap your light to the side and pop it out. Then you can unplug it. Grab your trim tool, ideally a metal one, and then pop off these clips. And then that second one there. Out they come. And now you can release this panel. So we've got to drill three holes, so I'm just getting a punch set to mark out where the holes are being drilled. Now we've marked the holes, it's time to drill them. So I'm starting with the top right. With the top right hole, there's two skins, so you only want to go through the first one. The others are all right. So we've used some rust inhibitor on the holes, uh, as you can see. Uh, we're also going to use some of the silicon um, used here, which is our spoiler bond, just to also prevent any water getting around the area. So I'm going to apply that now.
Now we've got the sealant on, let's install the hinge. So line it up, and then we want to start putting some your rivets in to locate it, like so. One thing to note, this one here, because there's a dual skin, it will not go fully in until we actually start to crush it. Grab your rivet gun and uh, operate. These are peel rivets, so they do take a little while to get through. As you can see, it's slowly starting to close the gap now. We've marked where we're cutting this panel in the Sharpie. There's a few areas that are needed to be cut. So then peel off the other side of the double-sided tape. So you need to make sure that you line it up within the center of those flat surfaces. Then install it. You will probably find you need to flex the panel very slightly to get it in. It will go in with a click. Like so, and then just apply some pressure to make sure it is adhered. So using some form of marking device, we need to line the, the hinge mechanism we've installed with this panel. Obviously every vehicle is going to get mounted very slightly differently, so it is up to us to make sure we align everything correctly for the panel to sit flush when it's all closed up. It's very awkward. One you're watching and then <laughs> <laughs> using the supplied hardware we're going to install the cover. That's the first screw in. And now we'll try and get it all lined up. Last step of the installation is to install the magnet. We're going to mount the magnet on this little bracket here. So what we need to do is line it up and then we're going to get a drill and then just drill a couple of two holes. So I'm going to mark out where I want them. Do this here and here. And then I'll take the magnet away so I can drill the hole. When doing up these screws, make sure you don't over tighten them. And that's the mount installed. So, hopefully, you found that video useful. So Mitch, I had a chat with Mitch afterwards and asked him what he thought, how long it would take to fit if you were following the instructions. And he thinks an hour tops really is a comfortable time you'd need to allow yourself to fit it. And it's relatively simple as you would have seen. You, it also comes with a QR code in the box with online instructions just to, for you to refer back to. So you're not having to constantly pause and watch your video. But nice bit of kit, really well thought out and designed. Like I said, there's a few other versions available out there, but they just hinge straight out and don't give you all that extra access. Uh, they don't hinge away from the body and they don't lock in in the same way and when locked in position they aren't, don't hold that original position that the panel used to so this you wouldn't know when this is closed that it's there and it's so easy to be able to open and close on a nice smooth action so great bit of kit if you're thinking about doing a conversion and you have a tailgate bear in mind it doesn't work with barn doors it's designed specifically for a tailgate because of the way that part is there on a tailgate version and um, yeah they're available on our website if you've got a conversion company that's doing something for you and you think this may work by all means send them the link might be suitable for how you want to set out the back of your camper van with your different connection points. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do press that like button. It means a lot. It helps us. It helps YouTube show that video to more people. Subscribe to the channel for plenty more how-to videos and lots of other cool tech for transporters amongst many other things coming. Trying to get a couple of videos out a week we think uh, might be useful to you all as and when we have time to film them. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>